First thing we're going to discuss are the estates because in 1.31 the estates are quite important and especially for a nation such as Byzantium. First off what we're going to do is we're going to give the plus one mana per month privileges for all three of states which means we get the zero percent crownlands afterwards. What we're going to do up next is we're going to dev up one of our lands here in uh, the south of Greece and we're going to go for the encouraged development edict beforehand. Doesn't matter which one it's up to you it's completely random do not use up your military mana since you want to get the tech before anybody else and after we've done this we're gonna sail titles which gives us 209% ducats for basically almost no crownlands given away after this we're gonna seize land thus getting 5% crownlands with this we basically start off with a lot more money than we would otherwise and we can use this in our initial war against the Ottomans I also recommend that you change your merchants to collect trade after a couple of months you're gonna see you're gonna get about 0.1% extra ducats it's not a lot but it's better than not getting those 0.10% ducats diplomatically speaking you don't have many alliance options sometimes Serbia allies you other times Trebizond or even Moldavia allies you regardless what you want to go for is you want to improve relations with the Knights and with Albania since both of these nations would most likely join in a war against Against the Ottomans together with you since the Knights have a core on the province of Sugla and Albanians have a core on Avlonia. One more thing we're gonna do is we're gonna delete the fort in Moria. Right before the war starts we're gonna be setting the defensive edict. You don't need to set it before the war starts as it is gonna increase your state maintenance and we're gonna ship on over our troops to the province of Athens. You can also give out the patronage of the arts for the extra 15 prestige and make both your king and your heir generals just in case one of them has great pips such as the king actually has for shock is really not bad initially what we want to go for is either attacking Epirus for the extra core that we have and vassalizing them so we can use their fleet against the Ottomans or if the allies for example Genoa or Venice or somebody that we cannot really fight then we're directly gonna be attacking the Ottomans instead so it is the 11th of December and apparently Epirus has not allied anyone we're gonna be attacking them with the reconquest siege be of the province of Arta. Take note, if they did ally somebody, then I recommend that you do not attack them and just directly attack the Ottomans instead. That being said, we're going to make a short detour of a couple of years, maybe even less than a couple of years, in which we're going to be improving relations with the Albanians and the Knights in order to get ready for the war with the Ottomans. One more thing I've done is I focused on getting my military points first and I've also recruited a discipline advisor, discipline or morale of army should be your go-to advisor. One more thing to note is that you should give the expansion of zealotry privilege for the clergy that offers 5% morale of armies and of course the private trade fleets supremacy over the crown and oversight by the clergy. Also keep an eye out sometimes you might ally the arrival of Albania if that's the case it probably is better if you just cancel the alliance with Serbia as Serbia is not going to do much to you compared to what Albania will do to help you out. To make it easier to siege down Arta make sure you keep your fleet in the Gulf of Tarano but do take note before they engage your fleet piece them out because you don't want to make them lose their fleet you want to let them keep that fleet so that they can help you out even though they will be slightly disloyal it will be worth it cancel the core they have on Yania also make sure you take Arta vassalize whatever is left that means Cephalonia force religion take the cash and that's it voila we have a small Epirus which means we can also give out the strong duchies privilege for the nobility because we have two vassals namely Athens and Epirus now move all of your army over to Athens move the fleet over to Athens as well wait for the galleys to finish building before we make our next move make sure you make this a full core of course and by now you should be able to get the alliance with both the Knights and probably in a little bit longer you can get the alliance with Albania also Knights are gonna be the most important part however since the Knights fleet is gonna be what we really need if you made it to this point in the video I assume that you actually enjoyed the video so if you do consider subscribing it would help out the channel so much make sure you leave the bell button on as well otherwise you don't get notified when I release new videos and why not hit that like button as well since we are talking about this right now right do it now here's the big brain move right after you vassalized and it is important that you vassalize Epirus you're gonna be able to rival the 
Ottomans as you do have considerable strength compared to before and you can even do this with the Venetians if you want to by rivaling the Ottomans whoever is their enemy is gonna be a friend of yours remember the old saying in any case because of that you are gonna be able to get more alliances than before and if you scornfully insult the Ottomans which I recommend that you do aside from getting 10 power projection you also will get better relations with their rivals which means you're gonna be very close to getting your alliance with Trebizond and Karaman and even other nations such as Poland, Lithuania and so on. Now aside from that point I also recommend you recruit three mercenary companies whichever has a really good shock pip general or maneuver. Fire and siege is not as important as shock and maneuver in this war. We got a five shock leader for the Levant and for the Morlocks a six maneuver leader. We're also going to assign 2,000 units on a separate army with a really high maneuver leader since we're going to send these units to Constantinople on the first of a month with 30 or 31 days. So whenever you decide to declare your war, declare the war on the first of the month, whichever month has 30 slash 31 days. This is because the Ottomans will keep the forts in Selanik and the forts in Kocheli not maintained and if you declare on the first you have 30 days to grab these forts before they start maintaining the forts. So if you keep your troops before the end of the month on these two tiles then you're going to automatically get the forts and by getting the forts you have complete access either over to the Anatolian or to the Balkan sides. Take note the Ottomans sometimes ally Akoyunlu or sometimes even Tunis and other random nations. It's not a big deal. We're going to keep them all on the other side of the Ottoman Empire whilst we maintain supremacy over the Balkans. Everything has been set and we are ready to go to war with the Ottomans. Our armies are semi replenished when it comes to their morale. The main two mercenaries are the free company is going to take a bit longer. We've sent the other 2000 troops over to the province of Constantinople on the first of a 31 day month. We've set it so that all of our fleets can have the vassal fleets attached to them. And just to put this into perspective, I could get an alliance with the Poles or with the Lithuanians if I just improve a little bit, which is going to make this a war against the Ottomans insanely easy. But I'm not going to do that because in most cases you will either not have great RNG to get the alliance with Poland or Lithuania or simply because it's just too easy. So what we're going to do instead, we're just going to declare war with what we have right now. We're going to set the war target as the province of Tirhana so we get some quick taking war score. Call in the Albanians and the Knights and get ready for the fight of our lives because this is going to be a tough war. It is not an easy war. Set your army so that they start marching towards the province of Selanik and since you've deleted the fort in Moria, they should, the Ottoman armies that is, should be attacking your province in Constantinople. Once we get word our troops to Constantinople, we will quickly scorch earth to delay the Ottoman armies from arriving there. Take note, if you really need the Epirate fleets to be on your side and they still have over 50 liberty desire, you could always placate ruler or you can simply just develop their provinces once and that means they're going to be loyal and their fleets are going to be attaching to your fleets. It is important since we want to have naval superiority on the Sea of Marmara. As you can tell, the Ottomans have started marching in the opposite direction and even if they maintain this fort, it does not matter. We're going to be scorching earth in this province and we're going to go to Koseli, which should be ours on the 26th of March. If they did not maintain Gelibolu, you should do the same to Gelibolu, but in 1.31 they always maintain Gelibolu, so keep that in mind. You also, if you want to, can get an admiral, make sure you spare some diplo points for that. And there you go, it is the 28th and after a couple of days, as you can see, they got zero garrison even though the month ticked because our troops were sitting here. We can now also sally our fleet in the Sea of Marmara and with our vassals navies attaching to us and with the knights navies attaching to us also, we should have definite superiority here. Make sure you split your army so you can quickly gobble up as much land as possible. Remember, this is a sprint, not a marathon at this point. And remember in Constantinople to set the defensiveness edict or defensive edict for that matter. There you go. We took Tirhana. Great. Keep on going into the north. After these two sieges here are going to take once, even though it's minus 35 and minus 42, it is going to become our provinces. There you go. And we switched on over. We got 26 war score from the get go. And it is Iron Man compatible. Don't think that this is some exploit or anything of the sorts because it is not. After you've taken Coachelli, rush 
rush for Biga. If we take Biga and Coachelli and we have the superiority in the Sea of Marmara, even though they take Constantinople, we still have free reign over all of the Anatolian sides and vice versa. Literally two months into this war and we already have the majority of the lands that we're interested in. Hell, we can even peace out with some parts of the Ottoman Empire, but we're going for 100% here, boys. We are going for a hundred percent. Whatever the situation during the war, remember that you have to rush for Gelibolu so that you prevent the Ottomans from coming into the Balkans. And even if you win battles, for example, I managed to wipe out 30,000 Ottoman and Akoyunlu troops. I literally stack wiped most of them because of the god general that I have from the mercenary company, as well as the Albanian Skanderberg as well. But even though I wiped all of those troops, they were down to 7,000 with in a few moments they recruited another 30,000 so we're back to square one. That being said make sure you focus on objectives above anything else since getting your objectives means that you're gonna win the war. You don't need to win the battles you need to win the objectives. This right here is what I'm talking about. Look at this 16,000 strong Ottoman army getting its ass kicked up by my amazing troopers and remember to build a spy network to help out with sieging stuff down. After one year plus we actually actually took down the city of Edirn and with that we have most of the Ottomans. We can wait till we get 100% but we don't need 100. What we really need is this. We're taking these provinces for ourselves. We're not taking the fort in Salanik. We're not taking their capital of Edirn and we're randomly taking the province of Tolchu as well as as much money as they can give us. Why you ask am I doing this? That is a great question. Well I have a buttload of loans to be more precise 572 loans here or 5 572 ducats in loans. By going for this option, I can pay off all of my loans. And by paying off all of my loans, I've also increased the amount of loans that I can take per month. So I am going to do a pro gamer move, which is release the nation of Bulgaria as a subject since they have a core on Tolchu and that means I now have cores on all of the Balkans through me and my Bulgarian vassal. I did not take Edirn or the province of Selenik because I need these two for super fast war score and the war that I'm going to declare in a couple of seconds. First off of course make everything new here a full state and we are going to be truce breaking. Don't worry about coalitions as you can see the only nations in a coalition our Ottomans, Kandar, both nations I could not give less of a schnitzel about. We are going to set Edirn as our main war goal, or even Kirklisi, doesn't matter, something you can quickly take. We still will have naval superiority as well as the straits secured. Make sure that you mothball the fort in Selanik before you peace out. And if you can call anybody in, call them. If you cannot, it's not a big deal. Of course, you have to wait for one month before you declare your war. There you go, we got a few events now for Phoenix Rises and so on. Remember that you can also see sell titles if you want to summon the diet once more i actually recommend that you sell titles and seize land right after that so you get an extra bit of cash for the next war to come in a couple of seconds and there you go we are ready for the next war up to you if you want to call trebizond or not if you do call them and you can use them as fodder declare the war and booyah we're gonna be sniping these cities fast make sure you have an army here ready to take selenik i kind of forgot about that but you will not forget because you are a pro gamer. You also will need to stab up a little bit and lower your war exhaustion with some of your diplo points. The beauty about having an ally in the Anatolian side such as Trebizond is that as I said the Ottomans will definitely focus on their little province here which is a mountain fort. So by the time they finish taking this I've taken all the Balkans and I'm now making my way into Anatolia as well. Use your vassals as cannon father as well as use your allies as cannon and father not just in this game but in any game in general around the 1450s you can piece them out you don't need to go for a hundred percent again this is important you want to save up some of your manpower and you want to piece them out just for the majority of their cash as well as the province of Ohri, Silistre and Kirklisi it is important you don't take the rest of this you could take it and you can prolong the war by 10 years but if you do that most likely what's going to happen is Venice is going to attack you and you need to be ready 
ready for the Venetian War. We'll be piecing them out for this. All of the central part here, the Ottomans cannot access because it is encompassed by us and other nations. And we're leaving Avlonia here just in case the Venetians want to attack the Ottomans also. Since most of the time the Venetians will vassalize Albania and use them to reconquer Avlonia. If that doesn't happen, we will be attacking the Ottomans a third time. Once more, we will truce break. It is vital that we do this so we break the Ottomans and destroy and shatter their economy. We've also taken the province of Okhrid ourselves instead of giving it to our vassal Bulgaria, even though they have a coronet, because we need to have a province directly bordering Serbia so we can attack them for the province of Kosovo. As you can see, we can now get a lot more allies, including Muscovy, Poland, Hungary, and we will be getting these allies as we are going to be attacking the Ottomans again. Most importantly, get Poland as an ally. If they're rival to Hungary, I actually recommend that you get Poland since you might need to take some lands from Hungary later on. Keep your spy network in the Ottoman lands as we'll need it in a few moments. We now have 20 spy network so we can get the claim on Kosovo. And as I was saying before, because I left Avlonia alone, the Venetians have attacked for the conquest of Avlonia. That means that the Venetians are gonna ruin the Ottomans once more. So after my war with Serbia, once I attack the Ottomans again, I'm gonna basically be fighting almost nobody. And if I'm lucky, the Venetians are gonna return course to my Bulgarian vassal here, which would be the best thing ever. Do make sure that you keep their capital in Adirn so you have easy access to the capital for the war score. You can take the province of Macedonia in the second war, however. Also, you can start integrating Athens if you want in 54, so that would be right after the war with the Serbians. Sometimes the Ottomans guarantee Serbia, but if they have a lot of debt like they do right now, 2,000 in debt, they will not join in. Bosnia will join, and I am going to cobbledrate so I can vassalize Bosnia and feed them back their cores over on uh, Herzegovina. The war is over. It was ridiculously easy. I am going to peace out, tell you first, I am going to make them my religion, and I'm also going to pillage their capital just because I can. Next up, of course, I'll be dealing with the nation of Bosnia, who's going to become my next vassal. That is correct. I officially am the vassal lord in the Balkans. I am, of course, going to also convert them to my religion and get as much cash as I can. No coalition to be seen on the horizon. And when it comes to Serbia, last but not least, I am, in fact, going to fully annex them. A booyah, no more Serbia. Don't forget that in 1.31, you can concentrate development before you core up lands, which makes it ridiculously cheap to core up afterwards. Don't worry about Kosovo. We are going to be boosting up this gold mine to 10 production so that we get 6.66 ducats from this one amazing province. Don't forget to also lower autonomy everywhere that you can lower your autonomy. This will boost your economy significantly and we also will integrate the nation of Athens. This literally will take one month since we have a core on Athens and with Athens out of the way it means that we can easily keep in check the other allies, sorry, the other vassals since we don't have four, we have three of them afterwards once we've integrated Athens. There you go, one month, booyah, no more Athens. We now can also recruit the independent and grand companies which are massive armies that will come in handy when we need them. Our fleets have literally doubled in size. Make sure during the war with Serbia that you increase the amount of galleys you have. Go over your naval force limit, it's A-OK. -okay. Your naval force limit will considerably expand after the next war against the Ottomans. You also can attack Herzegovina for your cores. You can either do it now or after the war with the Ottomans. It's really up to you based on your particular situation. If you like to watch me do a Byzantium game live, then check out my Twitch channel. I have a link in the description for that Twitch channel. I do almost daily streams and I do plan on starting a Byzantine campaign very soon. By the middle of the 1460s, you should have all of the Ottoman lands in the Balkans, all through the cunning use of the three separate wars that we've declared on the Ottomans. Aside from that, of course, you should have your Bosnian vassal and the Bulgarian vassal, which facilitates the conquest of the Ottoman lands. But most importantly, you should have decent allies such as Muscovy and Poland, and even a foothold in Anatolia for once we start our reconquest of the Anatolian lands. So with that in mind, our future expansion should include the rest of the Balkan lands to be taken from the Venetians. Of course, expand into the Ottoman lands and culturally convert them back to Greek because that's what we really need to do. 
unless you're Turkish, in which case, just keep it as Turkish, that's cool. And also go into the Romanian lands, the Mameluk lands, and even North Africa should be quite easy in the early game. Even a quick foothold in the south of Italy via your permanent claims that you get from the mission tree. One of the most important things you need to do is re-establish the theme system, which basically you need to have everything up to these lands here, which will give you plus 25 national manpower until the end of the game. You should also not have any loans by the 1460 and should not have gone bankrupt because that is just not necessary when you can easily win these wars and recover your lands without having to go bankrupt. Idea wise, I strongly recommend that you go for quantity ideas first since you will have extra military power points that you can quickly invest in quantity and religious as your second idea group because as you can see you'll be the only orthodox nation in this area meaning expanding into Catholic, Sunni, Shia, Coptic lands is going to be a piece of cake with the special Deus Volt 75% aggressive expansion CB. Later on also go for the trade ideas, influence ideas if you're struggling and you have a lot of vassals or personal union members and even diplomatic ideas is not bad with much later down the line economic and quality ideas. 